Well, that confirmation from the Ghana Health Service has come in the last three hours, and it is indeed confirmed that three persons have so far died. And we have uh, 68 confirmed cases. This uh, is as at March uh, 25, this is at uh, 410, 1610 GMT. All right, so the Ghana Medical Association has, has issued a statement calling on President Kufa to, to direct a uh, lockdown of the country to help contain the spread of the virus. It comes as the figures uh, just went up and the statement, I'm sharing the statement, which is the Ghana Medical Association has observed with grave concern the increasing trend of confirmed cases for COVID-19 in Ghana and our national response to this pandemic. On this day of national prayer and fasting, we call on all Ghanaians to keep the sacred and intercede for the nation. The, the GMA, being fully conscious of the threat posed by this pandemic, the disturbing trend of community spread and the obvious inadequate of uh, capacity, logistics and human resource of the nation's health system to deal with increased numbers of COVID-19 infection, especially in severe to critical cases, call on uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, to declare nationwide lockdown with the exception of essential services with immediate effect. The lockdown, though not a comfortable decision for leadership and citizens alike, it's a proving option backed by science and along with other measures will ultimately be in our interest. We call on all Ghanaians to support such a move in the national interest to save uh, nation from the devastating effects of this pandemic. Uh, the statement is signed by Dr. Frank Ankobia, who is the president of the GMA, and also signed by Dr. Justice Yangtzing, General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, who joins us on phone right now to uh, explain to us uh, the reason why they are calling for this lockdown and uh, giving us further and better particulars. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yangtzing. Now, we have your statement calling for uh, a lockdown. Now, I'd want you to explain to us why you think this lockdown is necessary, especially when the uh, government has already spoken and said, and said, indicated that at the right time, when it comes, it becomes necessary, that lockdown is going to happen. Well, thank you, Israel. Um, the issues are very simple. The first thing we should ask ourselves is, what is the reason for a lockdown? Generally, it is to break the chain of transmission. All right. Now, we have observed that as a country, our health system is not that robust. Our medical supplies resources are also not at its peak. So, i.e., if we compare ourselves to countries like Italy, Spain, states like New York, New Jersey, Obviously, they are ahead of us in terms of healthcare infrastructure and health system. Now, we shouldn't fall into the trap of waiting till we get thousands or hundreds of thousands of cases before we call for a lockdown in an attempt to break that chain of transmission. That will happen at a point where we are overly stretched, our resources are basically running out, mind you, don't basically manufacture most of the essential medical supplies and equipment we need in this country. We need to import them from elsewhere. And as we speak, because of the border closures, which is also very important, I must acknowledge, we are not getting enough inflows as we used to. Cargo planes are still coming in, but of course, it's limited. In the past, virtually every airline that comes may carry one form of goods or the other that will help the medical system or the medical facilities in general. All right. Now, fast forward. If we decide that we want to wait to that point before we make the call, one, it will still be the same impact that we want to make now. But it will be a bit too late because we would have had a lot of deaths our medical system or healthcare system itself would have been stretched and probably maybe on its knees by then. All other health conditions that we are already grappling with before the advent of COVID-19 technically will mean that there's going to be a slowdown on how we are managing all those things. But the focus in 
now be on COVID-19, which may be devastating at that point in time. Yeah. So we think that as the old adage goes, prevention is better than cure. But in this case, we can't prevent because it's already here. All right. But we should do our best to contain the limited cases we have now. Doctor and that is why we think that it is very appropriate at this point to make this call for government to also look at the nuances of it such that we prepare and do it as soon as possible to break the chain of transmission. As we speak, it's confined mostly to greater Accra and Ashanti to an extent. Government can have wide ways of doing the lockdown. But of course, it will ensure that if we're not that we contain the cases in these two regions and ensure that at least we manage them. Luckily, they are the two regions with arguably some of the best medical resources we have. All right. So Dr. We'll Yancey, I was, I was coming to the, that brings me to the second question I have for you. What sort of lockdown are you looking at? Well, in as much as we, we, we've called for a lockdown, we are also very mindful of the need for essential services and supplies like food, water, medicine to move around. So we have made that clear in our statement that look, in as much as we are calling for a lockdown, we want that exception to be taken into consideration such that at least people can get basic things like food, water, medicine, as and when they need them, such that we can all survive for whatever relatively short period that we may be under those kinds of conditions. Mind you, we don't have a lot of cases, but already we started losing people. Yeah. And the chances are, if we don't take time, we will get into that exponential phase that the system cannot just handle. If we get a lot of severe and critical illnesses, then what we mean is that our personnel will be extremely stressed. In fact, if you do the analysis, if you want to go by WHO standard, the number of persons in terms of health professionals you need, doctors, nurses, to care for COVID patients, if we have large numbers of our population infected with the disease, we cannot handle things. So basically, we are all asking for something that will ultimately ensure that we contain the condition. All right, it is better to take the blow now yeah. than to wait to the point where things have escalated and basically we are in the fair. Dr. Yang Singh, typically in, else, in other places where there has been uh, a lockdown, it usually goes with other things. It goes with testing. It goes with making provisions for the people who are in lockdown. Yes. Do we have what it takes to effect a lockdown? See, truth be told, we are not in control of most of the things that will aid us in this battle. Like you're talking about uh, testing and what have you. As we speak, yes, we have two centers that can test. We have some centers that if we upfill them, maybe they could test. But we don't have the requisite resources to do mass testing as we speak. If somebody doesn't come to our aid, we will not be able to do that. So the point here is that we shouldn't wait till we get to those huge numbers. That way, even if we are to stay in that lockdown for a while, we'll come out of it quickly because we have only very comparatively little numbers in terms of the cases to handle, and then we'll be in a better position to contain them. Of course, it also will mean that government will have to be innovative to find ways of supporting the system. Right. Like we are saying, if we allow essential goods and services to move around, at least people will get the basic things they need. Government will also support that. Dr. But Yancy. we think that it is better to support the people rather than spending all the resources on PPs and others when we'll have thousands and hundreds of cases around us that we are not able to manage. All right. I'd like you to hold on for me a bit because I'm bringing in, uh, I want to bounce uh, this off uh, another doctor. He's a Ghanaian doctor, Stephen Akiti. He is in Wenzhou in China. And he has seen this lockdown firsthand. Thank you very much for making time to speak with us, uh, Dr. Akiti. So there are calls for a lockdown in Ghana. You have seen this first time and you okay. have been handling uh, the, this issue of uh, the COVID-19 pan, pan, COVID pandemic first hand. What do you make of calls for this lockdown? I, I think I, I, agree, I agree strongly with um, my boss from 
the association that I, I strongly belong to. And I think it's time for us to have a lockdown. I think are you agreeing I've with him simply because he's your, again, he's your are you agreeing with him simply because he's your boss? No, I'm not agreeing because it's my boss, but I'm agreeing because it's the medical fact. Um and it's is the fact. We 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 as doctors we deal with facts and we deal with all indices to bring about this fact to bear. So I agree with him because it's the fact. And it's time for a lockdown. You see, and then, then there are a number of things that go with the lockdown, as you have seen in China. It goes with tests. It goes with keeping the people in their homes and trying to use the test to extract the people who may have been infected with COVID-19. Are you, is that what you're looking at or is that what you see happening here in Ghana? Um, Israel, what, what's, what we are, what the um, the association is saying is 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 very pronounced um whether there will be whether there will be kids available or not the lockdown is going to prevent further infection so so that alone is going to prevent people from 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 getting infected and when you don't have a lot of people getting infected that means the number of people who get to the complicated state of the disease will reduce. Uh, in a country like Ghana, that we don't have a lot of ventilators and a lot of logistics, it will be very difficult to actually maintain this. Fine, here in China, when they realize that you have any of those symptoms, they come in with an ambulance, a doctor, a nurse, and a police officer, and they come test you firsthand before they move you to the hospital. Maybe in Ghana, we can't do this. So the best thing for us to do now is to just have a complete lockdown then we can start doing the contact tracing and then we can then do the mass testing even with the mass testing the virologists on on tv the last time even said that we don't have a lot of the kids for all that so the best thing for us as, as my senior colleague said we just have to lock down you see which is why you talk about the fact that we have conceded that we don't have the kids to do the mass testing and so if we don't have the mass testing going along with the lockdown don't you see a situation where we're coming back to the same situation? No, 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 no. Israel, if there's a lockdown and you are self-quarantined in your house and you have any of the symptoms, then at least we can start getting those who are having the symptoms and start testing them. Then you see that the number of people who will be tested will also then be reduced. You see, then it brings you a number of people that you can now triage. Rather than allowing everybody to go out there, now you should bear in mind that we, people in the incubation states usually don't come out with any of the symptoms. Now, an experience here with the hospital I was working in, I'm an ophthalmologist resident, and I'll tell you for the fact that the reason why the whole eye hospital was closed because a patient came in with just conjunctivitis, what the, in the Ghanaian parlance we, we say Apollo. He tested and the person was positive. So you could, you could see that the virus can, 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 can exhibit in so many fashions. So I just think that the best thing, just, just lockdown so that it all prevents right. the whole uh, infectivity that is going on. All right. We all know that uh, there are a lot of people looking at even the, the Ghanaian transport system. Someone who is exposed can just expose a lot of people at the, at the same time. Let me so, get onto the line and speak, with your, and, and speak with your boss. Now, Dr. Yang Singh, uh, Dr. Akiti seems to agree with you. And I want to find out from you, how, many, how long are you looking at this lockdown? Well, truth be told, it is very difficult to predict or say exactly how many days. But we can start, you know, like all others have done, a couple of weeks, and then we review the situation as we move along. But let me just also add this. Don't forget that the way we live, our communal approach to life, makes it so difficult for sometimes people not to be around each other. Now, that is part of our culture. Don't forget that we also have a huge housing deficit. Fact that if we don't take some of these measures early enough, by the time things escalate and then we go to that point where we say, okay, we now want to do a lockdown. It might be too late because even at the point where people will be locked now, because of the nature of our communities and all that, they will be spreading the condition among themselves. And that will even worsen our case. If you look at the number of deaths that places like Italy are experiencing on a daily basis, 
We cannot afford to do that here. If we should get to their level, the change fatality will be worse than we can ever imagine. So we need to be strategic. And that is why I asked the first person, what is the mm. essence of the lockdown? To break the transmission, the chain. And when best is it to do? Is it now or wait when we are overwhelmed? All right. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Yang Singh. Dr. Yang Singh is the General Secretary of the Ghana mm -hmm. Medical Association. But I still have with me on, uh, on Skype Dr. Stephen Akiti. Now, Dr. Akiti, you know the Ghanaian situation, and uh, you're also advocating for a lockdown, uh, lockdown. But realistically, in Ghana, if you, how do you enforce a lockdown in Ghana? Mm. <laughs> um. Israel, the question you're asking is very technical. You know that I know you, you you just want to bring it out of me, but Israel, this is the truth. No, you could you could effectively enforce a lockdown. You could effectively enforce a lockdown in in China, and Wenzhou and Wuhan and Huawei. Yes, but I'm talking yes. about Ghana, Accra, Nima. Now, now we all know that we all know that in Ghana we have people who actually live by daily wages we also know that we have people who who have to go out on daily basis to actually have something to eat but then just just look at this situation now shops are not even opening people are not even going out people are not even buying from the streets just from the information going out there even though it's very difficult but it's necessary this is a time that i think it's very difficult for the government at hand to but it's the time for them to just take very difficult decisions. I think this is the time for our assemblymen and the community guys to, to work, thereby noticing the government, those who, who, who are on those daily wages, so that they can find a way of, of feeding them. Yes, they have, to, they, have to, they have to put them to work. Dr. Akiti, if the it's point possible I'm, that way. Dr. Akiti, the point I'm making is a lockdown that has leakages is as bad as no lockdown. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think our lockdowns are mostly affected by the military and the police. So when there is a lockdown, there will be a lockdown. There have been curfew in the northern parts of Ghana, and it has been, it has been done properly. A lockdown is just like a curfew. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Stephen Akiti. Dr. Stephen Akiti is a Ghanaian doctor who is now in Wenzhou, China. You're